This is Grandmaster Daniel Nitsky. We're watching Uzbek Grandmaster Jabakir Sandarov take on Shakri Armamidyarov at the 2021 World Rapid and Blitz. Here they go. We have an Italian as Mamidyarov has the black pieces and an Evans Gambit from the young Uzbek Grandmaster. Always love to see that. <laughs> Shakri are declining the Evans Gambit. He goes Bishop B6. That is a viable continuation. As Sandarov pushes his queenside pawns forward, A4, he can go A5. He gets his knight out to c3. The b4 pawn that can still be captured, but Shakri are going for a more conservative approach. Knight out to f6. This now begins to resemble a more conventional Italian, but generally there is a pawn on c3 rather than a knight. So let's see how Sindarov handles this relatively unique position. Will he castle? Will he reinforce his b pawn? Or will he continue to push his queenside pawns? Taking his time here, hesitating, taking the first think. A lot of options here for white. A lot of ways to develop his pieces. Bishop on c1 can also come out to a3 in these kinds of positions in order to defend the pawn and prepare b4, b5. 30 seconds now spent by Sindarov, and this is a three-minute game. He's got to move, and he decides to castle. Will Shakaryar do the same? He No, he'll go d6 first, reinforcing the e5 pawn, preparing to develop his, dark, his light squared bishop out to g4. This looking pretty comfortable for black so far. That bishop b6 idea by Shakra might have been a good decision. Knight out to d5 by Sindarov. Knight takes d5, and he's going to take with a pawn. And the reason he's going to take with a pawn is because Shakra will not be able to take on b4 with the knight because of c2, c3 trapping the knight. So Shakra has got to go knight back to e7. Very interesting transformation of the pawn structure. White has double d pawns, but black a little bit cramped after the knight drops back to e7. Shakra taking his time. Knight d4 is also possible here, so... That would be a little bit more ambitious. And Shakar are going for knight d4. Knight takes d4. We've got a knight trade. No more knights remaining on the board. It's just two bishops against two bishops. Back to a7. Sindara pushing d4 in the center. Shakar are castling. We might have a trade on e5. Very double-edged position. Hard to say who's better. This is probably about dynamically balanced. As Sindarov taking a little bit of time deciding whether to take on e5. He hesitated there. I think he wants to play bishop out to e3 in order to reinforce the d4 pawn because Shakriar wants to take on d4. Nope. Sindarov changes his mind. He takes on e5. Shakriar does the same. He's got a lot more time on the clock. Queen out to e2, hitting the e5 pawn. Now rook e8 is possible. Queen h4 looks like an interesting way to indirectly defend the e5 pawn by hitting the c4 bishop. So a lot of possibilities here for black. Shakriar, he goes for queen h4. Sindarov might want to move his, his light squared bishop. Maybe he'll get his dark squared bishop out to e3 as well. Big decision here as he's now down below two minutes. He's going to have to accelerate his pace of play as he hesitates. He wants his dark squared bishop and he put, puts it on e3, offering a trade of bishops. Now, if Shakriar accepts that trade, then the f file opens. And later on, the pressure on the f7 pawn could end up being an annoyance for black. So this is a big decision for Shakriar. How does he handle this position? Now, he, for the first time in the game, taking a bit of a longer think. Sindarov looking pretty confident in his position. His body language doesn't show any signs of anxiety. Shagriar taking a while here as the time situation beginning to equalize. Let's see whether he takes White's bishop on e3. He's definitely weighing the pros and cons of that because that involves opening up the f file. That might, might not be something that Black wants to allow in a blitz game particularly. Shagriar now down below two minutes himself. He doesn't seem anywhere near making a decision. What is he going to do? And he finally, he wants his own light squared bishop, gets bishop g4, so he doesn't take on e3, attacking white's queen. Sindarov moves it to a2. That queen and bishop forming a battery, and they are aiming at the f7 pawn. So if Shakira trades bishops, he's going to have to deal with d5, d6 later on. He goes a5. It's a cat and mouse game. Who flinches first? a5, creating tension on the queen side. Sindarov could push b5. No, he decides to take on a7 himself. And... That F file remaining closed for now. Can Sindarov open it with F4? And he is about to play F4. Will he play F3? No, he plays F4 offering the trade of pawns. But then again, the F file opens. That's not something Shak wants to allow. But how does Shakriar deal with that? If he plays E4, then he's going to have a very weak E pawn himself. And whoa, he plays A takes B4, allowing F takes E5. What a committal decision. After F takes E5, White's got a very impressive center. And the F file opens. I think Sindarov's not going to pass up that opportunity. I really don't know about that decision by Shakriar. Sindarov says, thank you very much. He plays F takes E5. Now, Shakriar can take on C3, and he's going to be up a pawn. But that open F file and White's queen and bishop look very menacing indeed. As Shakriar now falling below Sindarov on the clock, maybe there was something he didn't see because he's taking a long time here. He doesn't seem too happy what did he miss here? He plays b takes e3 because he has to. There goes Sindarov's pawn. e6, boom. This is looking really precarious for Black. This was a really bad misjudgment by Shakriar, who's now down to a minute on the clock. I don't know if he's going to be able to defend this. 
the Uzbek Grandmaster getting exactly what he wanted, an open F file, pressure on Shakira's F7 pawn. He's down below a minute. How is he going to defend? Maybe bring the queen back to E7. If he pushes his F pawn forward, then White's E pawn is going to go up to E7, and that's going to be followed by D6. That's unallowable. Shakira furiously spinning that bishop. He doesn't see what to do. Bishop H5 defending the F7 pawn, but this just doesn't look stable enough. How does Sindarov keep pressuring? He gets his rook to E1. The last piece into the game, all hands on deck. Now he's threatening to push his e-pawn out to e7 and follow that up with d6. This is looking really, really scary, really precarious for Chakrarsi. He gets down into 30 seconds on the clock. I just don't see a defense for Black. 29 seconds, the time ticking down. His clock is fading. He doesn't know what to do. This is looking close to lost for Black as he's down to 20 seconds now. Sindarov well over a minute. Shakri are trying to create tension. B5, but what if just bishop takes B5? Sindarov can simply take that pawn with his bishop. But definitely not with his pawn because the queen is pinned. This looks like desperation for Shakri and Sindarov hesitating there. And he was about to play E7, but now he gets his hand back. Maybe he just wants to take on B5 first. That seems to be the most open idea. That preserves the maximum flexibility in the center. Taking his time here. I don't know what Chakra has planned against Bishop takes b5. And Sindarov going for Bishop takes b5. I just don't see a move for Chakra as he pushes his c pawn up to c6. But what if Black White just takes that one too? What if White just takes that pawn as well? And Sindarov is about to. Gets his hand back. Bishop takes c6. Looks incredibly natural. Black is teetering on the brink here. Just a couple of moves away is White from crashing through in the center. And he takes it with a pawn. He creates himself another pass pawn. And it's also on c6. Two pass pawns on the 6th rank. Shakurar takes one of them, but that opens up the F file. Here comes the queen. Oh man, bishop f7 back. Can Sindarov take that bishop? No, he drops his queen back on e3, attacking the rook on a7. This is such a hard position to defend with 10 seconds left. And Shakurar is going to lose his c-pawn. He's going to lose his c-pawn. He's going to be two pawns down for no compensation. And both of them are passed. The f file is open. This is completely winning for white. Sindarov just needs to demonstrate a little bit of precise technique. He gets his rook to the open d-file. Mamed Yarov, bishop back to e8, stopping rook d7, but that has opened up the diagonal. Queen b3 looks crushing, queen b3 check, and Sindarov plays it. And now rook takes f7 and bishop c4. This looks like it's over, boom! Rook takes f7, Sindarov doesn't hesitate at all. Bishop back to c4, the pressure on black's f7 rook, which is pinned, has gone insurmountable. This looks completely winning for white. Three seconds for Shakari, he's gonna make a move. He goes rook f8, but now the c pawn can push. No, Sindarov takes it. Now c7 looks winning on the spot. C7, he is about to play it, and he plays it, and it's over. That pawn is going to promote, and Mamed Yarov resigns. What a game by the young Uzbek Grandmaster. If you want more games like this, make sure to click the link to the playlist. This was Grandmaster Daniel Andretsky. Thank you for watching. Jabakir Sindarov defeat Shakira Mamed Yarov at the 2021 FIDE World Rapid and Blitz.